Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. Today's vignette is based off a new paint color that I bought this weekend and it's Dixie Belle Mint Julep and it paints out a little bit darker than what I would thought. Now this is one of those old shoe shine boxes. Now if you're as old as I am you remember seeing these and a lot of times you'll see them in the thrift shops. Have you ever seen these or did your dad use these um, or maybe your grandfather? So it's a really nice sturdy box, but I didn't want to leave that foot rest on the top. So I had to pull it off and it had some really deep staples to get in it. So I won't go into a lot of detail about how I got them off, but it did kind of involve a little bit of work. So I finally got it off and it had some really large staples. Look at those things. It was a little tough to get them out, and they were they were pretty heavy. But when you first take something like this off, I did need to sand it just a little bit because it had some of the wood kind of splinter up. And then I used wood filler. Um, and wood filler typically needs to dry overnight to, to set up really well. And then I just use a paint scraper to spread it out. Once it dried completely, then I could sand that off as well so that it would be completely smooth. And I went on and painted the box. And this is one of the newer IOD transfers, and it's called Bungalow. And it's a really pretty transfer, and it has a lot of tropical birds on it. I haven't figured out how to use those tropical birds yet because, well, I live in North Carolina, so... We don't have tropical birds here. It does get hot and humid, but I'm going to kind of wait and figure out how to use those. But it has these gorgeous flowers on it, and the colors are so vibrant. So I've isolated some of those particular flowers, and I'm going to put them on the bottom corner of the box because, well, you know me at this point. If you've watched my videos, whenever I put transfers on something I like to have them to kind of fall over to the side. I just think it adds so much interest to it. Now, there is that part of the transfer that I do have to cut off. It's kind of like wrapping a present. You need to, those corners to be able to fold over neatly. And so that's why I trim that part off. Now, IOD, when they send transfers, they send like a hard plastic stick. And that's what I'm using to transfer on. And I'm sorry about the glare. It's just from the light ring that I'm using. And it was a little hard because typically when you have a transfer, you have that extra plastic around the edges. But because I needed to cut those flowers out and not have all the extra stuff, I had to be careful pushing that transfer down to the edge of that flower up at the top. And so I'm just pushing that transfer in with that plastic stick. You can also use the scraper from Cricut, or if you don't have a Cricut, you can get them at the Dollar Tree. Um, and some of the transfers that you purchase come with more like a popsicle stick. Um, but I don't know, I must have a heavy hand or whatever, but sometimes I break those things. And then I went on and added some French script and I'm like Lisa from Our Shabby Cottage. I love florals and French script. And I don't speak French, so I don't really know what it says. But I just think that it just kind of adds so much. And, well, because I'm me, the, the French script had to kind of fall over on the side. And because I don't keep my fingernails very long, I had to use that pair of scissors to kind of pull at it a little bit so I wouldn't pull it up completely. And you just scrape on it until it pulls up. But if you feel any resistance when you begin to pull up that transfer, lay it back down because that usually means that there's a little part that you didn't push on hard enough. And so if you had one of these boxes, would you use it for a footrest or would you use it to put treasures in? Now, when I, my kids were little, I used to polish their white little stride right shoes 
Um, but we didn't have to use a foot box. But that was something I used to have to polish when I was little. But I remember my dad having to polish his shoes. And it didn't matter what kind of job you had or even my brother, when he was in high school, that was back when you wore dress pants to school and like a button-up shirt. So it was pretty important to keep your shoes polished. And as a young girl, I don't, I didn't have to polish my shoes, but I have used shoe polish before on boots before because it helps to kind of bring that color back. Now, isn't that just so pretty? Now, I won't go into all of it, but I just kind of would pick at little different pieces and I added like a little flower up at the top or I'm sorry, it was more kind of like a leaf, a variegated leaf. And then I also put that transfer of a key on there. And it's just bits and parts of all different transfers. And that's what I like about transfers is you can add it all together and it just looks so pretty together. And there's the little butterfly that actually came off that same IOD transfer bungalow. Now, initially I thought about using some gold um, rub-on um, stuff that you put on the that I would put on like the little piece that opened it up but I changed my mind well and because I'm me you know how I like to always add something to the inside of the box so this is a mold that is made with redesign or is made by redesign with Prima and it's called floral daisy and I tend to use this mold a lot I'd like it because the flowers are so dainty and I go ahead and I use air dry clay in every piece, and you'll see why in just a minute. Um, but with Redesign with Prima, they don't have that little lip on the side. But it always seems to work for me because what I do is I use my finger to kind of roll that clay up to the very edge of the mold, and then... Um, it seems to kind of give it that little lip. And then I just took all the different pieces and glued it to the inside top of the box. And I just kind of played with it a little bit until I liked the design. So what I'm doing now is once I get it all glued on with tight bond glue, then um, I kind of press down around the edges, but I'll leave it sitting still for a while. And then I decided to go ahead and paint it with that mint julep Dixie Bell paint. I'm really just not confident enough to paint those flowers with different colors to put it, to make it match up with the flowers on the inside. That just is not something that makes me feel comfortable. So what I do is I go ahead and paint the whole thing and I let it dry really good. And then I go back and sometimes with air dry clay, you might little miss pieces of it when you're painting it. So I go back and touch it up. But when I do, Sometimes, you know, when you paint around the edge of a clay mold, then it leaves that extra layer of paint. So I use the brush, and on just that inside top cover, I go on and paint it again. And then I use the Dixie Belle white wax to bring out all the details. Now, I could have used some dark wax and then put white wax on top. Would you have done that? Or would you just use the white wax? And then you rub it off really easy. And I let it continue to set up and dry. I turn it like on its back because I want that glue to set up really well because there are so many pieces of it. And I, when I close the lid, I didn't want any of the pieces to fall off. Now, the next piece is one of my shoes. It's one of those shoes called, it's, I think the design is called a mule. And it's another ceramic shoe that I found in the thrift shop. I don't know. They must just scream out my name when I'm walking through the thrift shop. And so when I first started painting it, I wanted it to not be the same color as everything else. So I have got some new Dixie Belle chalk paint this weekend. And this color is called Apricot. And it's still just a little bit too bright. And I'm not com completely comfortable with that color. And so I am going to tone it down some. But because it's a small shoe, and because you can see the inside of the shoe really well, I go on and I paint the inside of the shoe and 
the part of the shoe where the arch of it, I paint that. So I just paint the entire shoe. And I want it to match the color on the box. Now this transfer, it is not, it does not come from the same transfer. It comes from the IOD transfer called Whispering Willows. And that one had a lot of little baby animals on it. But what I like about IOD is that the colors, even though it doesn't come from the same transfer, the colors just blend well really together. And so that was why I used that one. Now, because that little shoe is rounded, it's hard to get those transfers on. And so um, I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to put all of it on, but that was just the part of the transfer that I had that was extra that I didn't use on something else. So I kind of trim it here and there, and I actually have to cut off part of it. But you'll notice that with the OD transfers, they have that grid on there, and so it makes it easy to kind of match it up real well. And so it just, it takes a little bit of effort to get this one on. This one probably took me longer to get on than the one on the top, just because um, it was gonna be going around the curved surface. And what I like about the IOD transfers is the paint grips on really well. And there were some parts that I just pushed it down with my thumb really hard. And that kind of set it up. But because this shoe is so small, I tried using the little plastic tool, but it just, my hand just kept falling off because I guess I was pushing it too hard. So I pulled out this little scraper that I have with my Cricut machine. And I had to go a little bit slower. And so it's, it's a lot of effort to get this one on, but I like the way it did. Now I didn't go all over the shoe to set it, to, to decorate it. I just want to kind of keep it right up at the front of the shoe and it falls over to the side. And so you can see me pulling it up just inch by inch to try to make sure that all those pieces and then that transfer actually folds over to the inside and that's fine. Um, I know that you won't always see that part of it, but it just shows that that design goes on the inside as well. Now, when I added that little second piece of transfer that's sitting over to the side, it didn't match up completely. There was just a little bit of a piece that didn't show up, but that's okay. And see, that's where I'm pushing that transfer into the side. Now, it does wrinkle just a little bit, but it's okay. So, but because it didn't match up and there was just a little teeny gap in it, then I knew that it would blend really well when I put the Voodoo Gel Stain on it. And then that kind of hides that little part and you don't even see it when you, when you look at it. And I used the Voodoo Gel Stain all over it. And I used it on the inside and on the bottom. So the whole thing is painted completely, but there's the design. And because it's painted or because it's transferred onto something that's not white, um, I wanted, I needed to use something to blend that transfer in so that it just wasn't so stark. And then because I like the bling, then I used the gilding wax that was gold because I was gonna be using it on some other pieces. So after the stain dried, then I used the gilding wax. Now I'm really gonna go for the bling. And so what I did is I used some eyelash yarn to just take a little bow and just wrap it around my fingers. And I then tied it off and it looks, it kinda of looks like that tinsel we used to put on our Christmas tree. And then I used resin to make a little mold that was a crown and then I hot glued it on and I just painted that white and then I went back and used gold gilding wax on top of that and I know that's a lot of bling so did I overdo it and I know it's not something that I really can use but that piece of the footrest I painted it white and I set it on the opposite way and then I glued the shoe on top of it, but I painted it white and then I used gold gilding wax just so that it would blend all together, but I painted the whole thing 
So it's kind of like resting on top of it. So I won't be able to use that part or go back and add it to anything, but I had to add it to that little thin part so that it would lay flat. Now my next project is the brush that came with the polish shoe. And so you can use it in a lot of different ways. Um, you could use it as a brush that you used to, once you put the polish on, then you would wipe it down with like a microfiber or something like, it was like a polishing cloth, and then you would buff it with that little brush and make them shine. But I didn't want to get the bristles on the brush painted. I didn't want to get any paint on them at all. So I used a lot of painter's tape and I went all the way around the edge and then I went back and I started painting it with that Dixie Belle Mint Julep and I painted it all the way to the edge and even after I pulled the painter's tape off, then I used a little skinny brush to kind of fit inside those bristles so that you wouldn't see the wooden part at all. But I had to go really slow to do that because I didn't want... Um, any of the paint to get on the bristles. And then I put part of another transfer that I had put on the shoe from the Whispering Willows. And so I put that transfer on it. And you can either have it just sitting there in the vignette or you can flip it over. And the bristles are really soft. But if you have a thinner photograph, you can slide that photograph in and have it sitting up. And I didn't want to put a photograph of anybody in particular in my family. So I just took um, just an old piece of paper that had a picture of a little girl on it. And I glued it onto a little piece of cardstock to make it look like a photo. That transfer went on much easier. So would you be somebody that would use something like this to put pictures in and have those set up? Or would you want it just kind of sitting over to the side? And I guess you could use it. Now the extra two pieces are just things that I staged. And so I painted that with buttercream. And then I dry brushed some of that apricot pink over it. And I still wasn't happy with it. And so then I used the Voodoo Gel Stain to make it dark. And then it was too dark, so then I went back and I used gold gilding wax on it. And then I liked it. But I went on and did, did the dry brushing because that's what I thought I wanted it to look like. Um, because I thought of all the extra detail that was on there that the dry brush would look good. But it just it just didn't seem to stand out enough. But I really like this color. Is, I don't think I would use it in the fall, but I do think it's a pretty spring and summer color to use. And there's a lot of detail on this candlestick that I thrifted. And everything that you see today, I thrifted. And the other piece is just like a little pedestal that I did the same finish on. I did the buttercream on it. Now, I didn't dry brush it with the pink or I'm sorry, with the apricot, because this is something that I might want to use in another vignette. And for some reason, my video is showing up really slow. I, I don't normally paint that slow, but I must have hit an extra button on the camera that made it go in slow motion. So I got tickled when I was editing this whole thing, um, watching it paint really slow. And in all honesty, I didn't know how to fix it. So that's why you're watching it go very, very slowly. But on this one, I painted it buttercream, and then I used the Voodoo Gel Stain, and then, of course, I went back with the Gilding Wax because I like gold. And then I put all the pieces together, and here it is. Now, this one, I have the box open, and I have some things sitting on the inside. So it's just a little vignette that is fit for a queen. So my granddaughters will be here in just a little bit and I either have to hide it when they get before they get here or I'm thinking my oldest one will want to steal all the little crowns off of it. And that little shiny necklace is actually something that I wore when my daughter got married. 
Now, I, I like to wear jewelry, and so my daughter had to approve of the necklace before I picked it out because she's, she didn't want it to be too much. And so these are, these are all the pieces together. And then on this one, I flipped the brush over, and this is that little old photograph that I just kind of made up on a piece of cardstock and a picture of a little girl. And these are just some old pearls that I used to stage with. And that little gold crown, um, actually, I got it on, I think I got it on Etsy. And it's like a little cake topper. But it's just, it's really a sweet little thing. But it's, there's a lot of bling to it. And this is where I show where the box is closed. So do you like the box open or closed? And how would you actually use it? But look at all those pieces that kind of just seem seamlessly fit together. And you might think, oh, well, it came all from the same transfer, but it didn't. And that's why it's important to save all those little pieces, because you can use them here and there. And here's a really good close-up of the box. I just think it's beautiful. I think I'm going to have a hard time putting it into my vendor booth, because I really like that color a lot. But that's with everything closed. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all your support and all of your views and all of your sweet comments. Have a wonderful day.